So if we make this an owner, we add Sherlock Holmes, Space Project, Water Project, add to all teams. Now we're pushing Sherlock Holmes to owners of all those teams. So if we go, we can see right now Water Project, he's not there. If we navigate off and let it refresh and come back, Sherlock Holmes is now an owner to Water Project and Space Project. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions. Today I'm going to create an app to bulk add a user to Teams. If you go into Teams and you want to add a user, uh, you could create a script, but a lot of people, they go in here, they do manage team, they click add member, and then they add a member. And so I could just imagine a large organization, if you had a new person come in and you wanted to add him to I don't know, seven teams, you'd have to go through each team, click through, add them as a Teams admin. So today, what I wanted to do was create a power app that just makes it uh, one button click. Well, you have to click the person and then you click the Teams you want to add them to and then you click one time. So I wanted to create that. Uh, right now I have two data source connections, one to Microsoft Teams and the other to Office 365 users. So I am connected to both of those. All right, so the first thing I want to do is get a gallery of all my teams. So let's go ahead and create a gallery. I'll do a vertical. So when I create this gallery, what's going to happen is it's all going to turn up red because it doesn't know the data that I want to put in there. So in the items property, what I'm going to say is Microsoft Teams. So let's see, get all teams dot value. All right, so it's populating, you can tell. And then so we're going to change this. It's saying the image is off. We just removed the image. All right, so now I have a list of all my teams. Now, this is my developer environment, so I don't have too many teams. But I have a few. So I'm just going to make the gallery smaller. And these are going to be my teams. Now, if a user were to connect to this app, they're only going to have access to the teams that they can see. And they're only going to be able to add users to the ones they're owners to. So this instance, what I'm thinking is that this is going to be a, a Teams administrator who wants to use this Power, uh, power App. So. On the left side, we have a gallery of my teams. What we want to do is add each one of these to a, another gallery. So I have another gallery. And in this gallery, what I want to do is create a collection. So every time I click on this gallery on one of the teams, I want to, let's put an icon in here. I want a plus. Let's put it in the gallery actually. So if I click in here, icon plus. All right, we have our plus symbol. And this plus symbol is going to select parent and then it's going to create a collection. So what is it going to collect? It's going to collect my teams. These are the ones that I click on. So that's the name of our gallery, name of our table is my teams. And when we click on this plus, we want to collect two things. We want to collect the ID, and the ID is going to be gallery1.selected.id. And then we want to uh, collect one more thing, and that's the name. That's the name of my column, my collection now. It's gallery1.selected.displayName. All right, so now every time we click in one of these pluses, we're going to create a collection. And this second gallery, the items are going to be my teams. All right, I'm going to get rid of this picture just because this is how I create the galleries quickly. All right, so let's say we uh, start it and we try. We go developing site. We have our ID and our site branding. ID Insight, ID Insight. All right, so we have a collection here. 
of IDs and site display names. And I'm just going to go ahead and hide this. Or actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete the name and then change this to name. All right, and now in our gallery, there's another thing we can do. We can come in here and do the wrap count. I've noticed that Microsoft does it a lot. We'll do a, a three wrap count. And we'll make the font size smaller. And let's see, we can remove the separator. And our title, we'll put a border on it. Put a border on our title. And then we'll make the gallery size a lot smaller. All right, so we have another gallery here of our selected choices. And if we line it up perfectly, there we go. So we have another gallery of our selected choices. So let's go ahead and create a label for it just so we know what's going on. And we can worry about the UI later. I just want to show you how you can do this. All right, so we have a gallery of all of our teams, and then we have the ones that we select. So let's go ahead and create a button to clear that collection. Clear my teams. All right. Clear. We'll just call it clear. So now we can come in here. We can clear it out. We can select teams if we want them, as many as we'd like. Maybe we'll move the button down a little bit. All right, so we have many teams selected. And these teams uh, literally match to my teams and teams, just so you see developing site, Bart Simpson team, branding, water projects, space project. It's the, it's the same as in teams for me. All right. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create my own people picker. And how are we going to do that? So we added another data source, and that was the Office 365 users. So I'm going to do an input combo box. In our search box, our items property is going to be that other data source. So that's the Office 365 users dot search user. And so I'm looking up here in the top, it's kind of giving me the hint text or the IntelliSense. It's saying, hey, okay, so what's search term? Search term is going to be the combo box one dot search text. And we're going to say only show us the top 10. So the combo box is going to search the data source. It's going to use whatever we type in the search text. So in the combo box, I moved my face for just a second, but if you see right here in the properties of combo box, you can turn on allow searching. So if we turn on allow searching, it lets us search this combo box. And then for the field, change the layout to a person. And the primary text can dis be display name. Uh, secondary text is ID, that, that sounds good to me. And search field, this is how we're gonna search in our search box, is display name. So my search box, combo box is only going to show the top 10 people, right? So there are people missing in here. So if we were to type in Sherlock, you'll notice that he shows up even though he is not in the top 10 and we can now select him. Finally, we have a gallery for our teams. We have a gallery for our selected teams. And now we want to add them, add him to all those teams. So let's create a button to add him. So this button is going to add to all teams. And what we're gonna do on select is for all. For all my teams, so that's our collection that we created. And so that's this gallery right here. Our items property of this gallery is my teams. We're going to Microsoft Teams dot add member to team 
and what we're, what are we going to add? We're going to add the ID. So this is our column in our collection called ID, and then next we're going to say combo box one dot selected dot ID. That's going to be our combo box right there. So let's go ahead and go look at my teams. Let's uh, say we have Bart Simpson team. We'll check that one out. Bart Simpson team, manage teams. It already has Sherlock in here. Let's uh, pick someone different. Uh, let's pick Let's pick Dwayne Johnson. I know he's not in there, very popular guy. We'll pick Dwayne Johnson. Let's add him to all of these teams. I'm gonna click add to all teams. You can see the little dots up here, it's thinking. It's searching, it's pushing it out. It takes a little bit, so you could add a little spinner in here if you wanted. But we're adding Dwayne Johnson to all these teams. So let's uh, look at Manage Team here. Back to Bart Simpson team. We can now see we now have Dwayne Johnson. If we look at another one, let's say the My SharePoint Questions team. So the My SP Questions team, if we go to Manage Team, we'll notice that we have Dwayne Johnson and Bart Simpson. Just do it one more time, just to make sure everyone recognizes this. So this is adding this user to all of those teams just by selecting him one time. So we can clear it out, we can say add Sherlock to Let's see, this project, this project, uh, space project, and water project. So we're gonna add Sherlock Holmes to him, add to all teams. We go check out space project, water project. We can see Sherlock Holmes is added in here. Now there's one more thing you can do. You can actually add them to owners. So we could actually create let's say we created a I guess it's a, a checkbox let's create a checkbox and let's say it make owner right so add to all teams there's one more thing you can do you can say if this person is an owner or not so if it's an owner we can say checkbox one dot value so when it's not checked, it's false. When it's checked, it's true. So if we make this an owner, we add Sherlock Holmes, space project, water project, add to all teams. Now we're pushing Sherlock Holmes to owners of all those teams. So if we go, we can see right now water project, he's not there. If we navigate off and let it refresh and come back, Sherlock Holmes is now an owner to water project and space project. So actually just adding a simple little checkbox, we can now make someone an owner or not. And so we can work on the UI of this if we wanted to, but I'm gonna save that for my next video. I think for my next video, I'm gonna show you a couple more things that we can do with Teams. And I just wanna thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you please are enjoying this content, if it's helping you create Power Apps, please like, subscribe. Uh, thank you guys and I'll see you next time.